Hello and welcome to week seven. For week seven, the first thing that you're going to do is to complete your reading assignment. The reading assignment this week entails looking through the section on argumentative theses, um, organizing your argument and argumentative purposes. And I want you to read through all, all of the subsections within those sections. Definitely to take some time to review this information in the um, Prezi that's uh, located at the bottom of the page. Um, next, you'll move into the review section. For the review section, you're going to look over project number two. Now, project number two is where you're going to basically do a literature review. A literature review you've seen in the articles that you've been reading that lays out what everybody else has had to say about a topic. So for example, the writers that of the articles that you've been reading first lay out what everybody else has already said. Well, not everybody, but they lay out what has already been said um, about the topic, especially in regard to that particular research question that they've posed um, or, or the subtopics that they want to cover. So you're giving that brief, not brief, but, you know, um, relatively developed history behind your academic argument. It's called, again, a review of literature it establishes that conversation so that then what you see in the articles that you've been reading is the study that those writers or researchers have done. And then in the discussion and conclusion section, they bring it all together. We're not going to get to those two parts. I know you did discussion form number four, and you've done some primary research, you're not going to add that in yet. This is all laying out what they, meaning other researchers in the field, have to say about your argument. But you also want to be cognizant of adding in um, that counterpoint. You want to acknowledge that there's people who do not agree with your thesis out there, and you want to not only acknowledge them, but most likely refute them. Um, all right, you're going to use all four of your scholarly sources that you summarized in annotated bibliographies number one and two. That's going to support your claim. You can include more than those four sources. You know, it doesn't matter whether they're scholarly or popular, but you do have to have the four scholarly sources. Your paper will be at least three to five pages long. It'll be in APA format. Um, it'll be, it, you know, double spaced. You'll include your in-text references, your uh, references page. Um, and as you'll notice in the sample project, it, it will probably be helpful for you to start off with subdividing into those level two and level three headings. So I've included the link to the heading and seriation page in the Purdue OWL. I'll briefly pop over to the sample. Um, I've included in the review section sample project number two. You can see the title page is set up according to APA format, but you can see that we've got a level one heading for the title of the paper, level two headings for the sections, the, the sections that are, um, you know, divided up according to this particular topic the, surrounding the truth about conventional organic and genetically modified food. So you have a section on conventional farming, genetically modified food, um, and so on. Now, you also in the review section have uh, a handout from the University of North Carolina about literature reviews. So this just is extra information. Again, you've been reading through these literature reviews for the last few weeks, so you have a general idea about what they uh, look like, but this will, you know, allow you to clarify, to narrow that topic, which you've already done. You're finding that focus, considering how you might want to organize this. They give you, you know, a basic outline of that. Uh, so again, these re resources are here to help you as you um, begin to draft project number two. So again, you're going to read, then you're going to look through these review handouts. Your project number two rough draft is not due until next week, midweek, Wednesday, October 25th. That's because we're right on the cusp of our fall break. So I want to give you a little bit of extra time and give you some time to uh, decompress and de-stress um, during fall break. So you'll, you'll submit that rough draft at the very latest midway through week eight. If you have any questions as you move through this process, don't hesitate to ask.